One of the most difficult parts about keeping African cichlids is dealing with aggression. So that's right, African cichlids and aggression, who would have thought? But uh, I do get a lot of questions about African cichlids because I keep so many of them. I get questions and um, emailed to me and in various comments, etc., asking me about uh, how to manage aggression. Now I have filmed other videos about the hierarchy and how uh, a fish will you know, kind of establish themselves as a tank boss. I'll put a link up here so you can watch it after this video. And I've also um, filmed videos and spoken about uh, the kind of a, the appropriate aquarium for African cichlids and the various species and uh, what might be best for um, either the type of fish that you want to keep or the type of fish that's best for your aquarium that you already have. So I'll put a link of that up here as well. But uh, anyway, sometimes people will comment on my videos about this particular tank and uh, kind of the aggression that happens in this tank. And I'll, I'll, what I will share with you is that um, most of the time with this aquarium, this is my, my Malawi tank, the lights are off on the tank. So I don't keep the lights on on this tank um, except for when I'm sitting right here to sit and enjoy the fish and just kind of stare at them for you know an hour or so um, or if I'm going to be filming or if we have company. Otherwise, for the most part, the lights stay off and uh, generally when the lights are off, you have less aggression. The colors aren't as uh, fully displayed. It's a little bit more muted and um, they're just not as fired up. But when the lights go on, boom, they're all excited. Um, right now they're not so aggressive at this moment and that might change in the next minute or so and they'll probably be fighting over my shoulder because I just threw some food in there just to kind of uh, occupy them while I was sitting here. Um, but anyway, what I want to talk to you about today is uh, how to manage aggression. Now these are just a couple of ways that I happen to deal with it and doesn't mean it's the only way, doesn't mean it's the best way, it's just ways that I have found that have worked for me limiting fish losses and limiting uh, kind of the aggressive behavior that can result in fish deaths, etc. So I already mentioned one and that's the lighting. So um, if you have bright lights, generally the fish are gonna be more displayed, they're gonna show off their colors and uh, they might be more prone to being feisty. If you keep your lights off during the day and only turn the lights on when you're home to enjoy the fish, you'll probably have less aggression or you'll have a shorter period of aggression so your fish don't get as beat up. One way to deal with this is just to put a timer on your lights. So if you're gonna go to work in the morning and then you come home at you know 5 or 6 p.m. and you wanna enjoy your fish until 9 p.m., maybe have the lights kick on at 6 p.m. and have them turn off at 9 p.m. and that way you only have the lights on for three hours, saves on energy and uh, reduces some of the stress on the fish. And then uh, during the day when you're not home, the lights are off, they're not as, uh, they're not as crazed and uh, aggressive. Um, the other way that's very popular is having a male only tank. Um, that is uh, a very popular way because the thought is, is if you only have males, they don't have any females to fight over. So um, they have, you know, less aggressive behavior. Um, but the, then you have the difficulty of only getting males. So that means you really have to do your research when you buy your fish and ensure that you only have males. Now, sometimes it's, it's, uh, it does happen, you know, pretty frequently. They will, um, some of the fish stores will have fish that were what we call juiced. So my dog just shook there. Um, so, th so you're, you'll have fish that are juiced and um, that means that they've been given some hormones um, in the foods, foods that they eat at the farms and they display more colorful patterns that resemble males and then after a couple of months it wears off and then obviously they're not males. So um, that has happened to me. Uh, some of my females downstairs in the fish room are um, females obviously but they were displaying male colors when I bought them and then later discovered that they were not males so they are now downstairs and uh, part of my breeding program. But um, anyway, so having males only, having the lights off is, a, is another way. Um, one way that is a little bit controversial is overstocking. And uh, what that means is having a lot of fish in an aquarium to have the aggression spread out or have so many fish in your tank to where they don't really have anything to fight over. Now in this aquarium, this is a 75 gallon tank and I have uh, well, it kind of varies because I move fish up and down stairs, but I might have 18 or so fish in here right now. I'm not sure exactly. Maybe one of you can count them while uh, you're looking at over my shoulder. But um, typically I have like 22 or so fish in here, and uh, that would be kind of medium overstocked to overstocked. Um, it's a pretty you know fair amount of fish for a 75-gallon aquarium. 
Um, I do have a sump down below, which does add to water volume. Um, and I do high water changes. So when I talk about water changes and I've talked about uh, kind of the frequency that I've done uh, with this tank, um, I do like 70 to 75% water changes uh, about once every three to four days. And uh, so about twice a week they're getting, you know, a, a, a very significant amount of water changes. So that helps to keep the nitrate levels down, etc. cetera. So, um, you know, over, overstocking is one way to deal with it. Uh, you, do, you do want to make sure that if you overstock that you have excellent filtration, meaning a very robust filter. So maybe if I only had one filter on this tank, I would want like an FX4 or an FX6 as an example, a really large canister filter. Um, I happen to have um, a, a hang on the back, a Fluval 406 canister filter and a, um, a sump um, on here. And the sump is a wet dry sump with a refugium. So there's a big plant growing down there. So I have my hang on the back, my canister, and my sump so that's a lot of filtration but that's what's needed in order to have so many fish in this aquarium another thing that you can do with certain types of fish uh, african cichlids maybe more so on the ambuna side is to have their vision blocked across a tank so i don't do that for my open water swimmers because they like to have space to swim back and forth and they're not as agile um, as the ambuna are um, but uh, one way to kind of reduce aggression is to have things blocking a line of sight. So as an example, if I had like a large uh, like rock formation in here that blocked off half of the tank, um, a fish that's on this side that might be a dominant male wouldn't be able to see the fish over on this side and would only chase the fish from one, you know, half of the tank and kind of stop at where that rock formation is and then that fish can hide on the other side. Now, I do that a lot with my Mbuna. The Mbuna like to swim in and around rocks and they are a rock dwelling fish. Um, they will kind of swim into caves, etc. cetera. Um, and I found that to be very effective for my Mbuna. Um, I didn't find it to be as effective for my peacocks um, specifically because what would happen is you would have one fish that was kind of occupying one part of the tank maybe like one third of the tank, and then you'd have all of the other fish hanging out on the other side. So, but it wouldn't look very balanced. You'd have, you know, 15 or 20 fish over here and one fish over there. And it did reduce aggression because the, the dominant fish couldn't see the other fish and he wasn't chasing them around. And then the fish on this side were overstocked because they're crowded together. So they can't really fight because there's really nothing to fight over. There's no territory to fight over. And uh, there's just, you know, no one to pick on because there's too many of them in a small space. But I didn't like it. It didn't look very balanced to me. And uh, so I just decided to do the open uh, water. Um, the other thing that uh, some people will um, kind of go by is uh, having no decorations. So just doing like a very bare tank without any rocks and decorations because the thought there is again if you have a tank that doesn't uh, allow for any separation of territory there's nothing really to fight over there's no patch of sand or gravel there's no rocks to kind of uh, cordon off as your own then um, sometimes the thought is that they will be less aggressive that way now I do have some bare bottom tanks but those are specifically just for growing out my fish so I don't know if it if if um, it really works. I, I haven't tried it in my display tanks just because I like to have substrate and I like to have a couple of rocks in there just to kind of break it up and make it look uh, kind of more aesthetic as far as you know my enjoyment. A couple other things that uh, I would recommend in helping to uh, reduce aggression. Uh, one of those is temperature. So uh, that's probably a little bit less known as far as one of the ways to keep the fish a little bit more docile. But if you keep the temperature a little bit more moderate um, then the fish are a little bit less active because they don't have um, their body temperature up as much and it's not as elevated so they're going to be moving a little slower so and I don't mean like keep your fish cold or keep them at 70 degrees but uh, like for example I have this aquarium set at 78 and um, it stays right around 78 all of the time it doesn't really fluctuate and I live in San Francisco, so we don't really get hot or cold. It's just kind of moderate outside. We don't have air conditioning in our house. We don't need it. Um, so it doesn't really fluctuate that much. Um, if I were to raise the temperature to, let's say, 80 to 81 degrees, um, and I have done that for the Tanganyikan tank, and this run does run a little bit warmer because they do like it a little bit warmer, um, then the fish are a little bit more um, 
active and uh, they could, uh, their metabolism is kicked up so they could show a little bit more aggression. Um, and then the other thing is food. So if you think about yourself, if you are a little bit cranky and hungry, uh, you're maybe a little irritable and not so fun to be around. I know I'm not. I get pretty hangry when I don't eat. And because I'm you know, pretty serious about my weightlifting and everything, uh, I have to eat meals all the time. I eat about 4,000 calories a day just to kind of uh, su sustain myself and my workouts. So um, if I were to you know, not eat, I would get very hungry and cranky very quickly and uh, wouldn't be so fun to be around. So um, the fish can be the same way. So if they're you know, a little bit, uh, you know, hungry, they'll be a little bit feisty and, you know, a little cranky. But if you keep them well fed and keep them healthy, they're less likely to uh, bicker as often. So those are just a few points. Um, it's not everything. It's not the best way. But uh, those are just a few things that I've done. Again, um, temperature is one way. Uh, keeping an overstock tank is another way. Mail only is the lights off and also blocking any line of sight. So hopefully one of those will work for you. Um, if you are keeping African cichlids and you are frustrated with the aggression, know that you're not alone. It's very common and uh, it's just part of the nature of the fish. And you know, it's one of the reasons why for some people they just don't wanna keep them because they can't deal with the aggression. And it's one of the reasons why some people love them because they do like seeing that activity. I'd love to hear your comments down below on how you deal with aggression in your African cichlid tanks. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.